It was a crime that rattled the South Kansas City community. Two teenagers and a baby boy shot to death. Prosecutors say that they know who killed the young victims last year, but could have a tough time proving it because of spousal privilege. The law gives husbands and wives the right to refuse to testify against one another. Only on KCTV5, Janine Kiesling explains how the legal loophole could affect a case that left the community devastated. To look inside this home on East 84th Terrace today, you would have no idea the violence that occurred here months earlier. In the evening hours of September 8th, a teenage boy walked inside and found his sister, 17-year-old Bianca Fletcher, her friend, 18-year-old Shannon Rollins Jr., and Fletcher's one-year-old son, Jojo, dead. I learned to cope with it, you know. Yale Washington was Roland's mother. It's been real tough, but you know I pray about it. I have I, I break down at times, but I've been getting better dealing with it. Washington says her son had nothing to do with the crime. Prosecutors believe Joseph Nelson, Fletcher's ex-boyfriend, walked into the house through an unlocked door. KCTV5 has learned Nelson's girlfriend, Shalana Davis, told police Nelson had a gun and ordered Rollins and Fletcher to sit down. Fletcher and Nelson started arguing, and Nelson opened fire. Davis told investigators she helped pick up shell casings before she and Nelson left. A week and a half after the murders, Nelson was charged with burglary murder. Davis is now the key witness in the state's case against her boyfriend. Well, I feel like she needs to be charged with the same crime because she was there when it happened. She's covering up. Here's where the case takes a curious turn. With Nelson facing life in prison without the possibility of parole if convicted, somehow he and Davis managed to secretly communicate. On October 21st, Nelson and Davis applied for a marriage license. On November 23rd, prosecutors filed a motion to depose Shalana Davis to preserve her testimony. That motion says, quote, In her statement to police, Shalana Davis detailed her eyewitness account of the events that formed the basis for the felony charges filed against Nelson. Other than Davis and Nelson, the state is unaware of any other witnesses to the event. As such, Davis is a necessary and essential witness for the state. Finally, prosecutors wrote, Miss Davis witnessed the events, and her testimony, in some respects, could become unavailable to the state after she is married to the defendant. Not only could prosecutors lose their key witness if Davis and Nelson got married, her statement to police could be thrown out as well. A hearing to decide if the state could force Davis to give a videotaped testimony was set for December 14th, but a week before the hearing were married. He probably read some article, oh, spousal privilege, this will save my you-know-what. It's not going to. Criminal defense attorney Matt O'Connor is not part of this case. He says if the couple planned on hiding behind laws that protect spouses from being forced to testify against one another, it's not going to work. I think that is just a, a red herring. That's a distraction. Because even if they do get married, she can still be compelled to testify in many different ways. There's the statute. This involves a murder. Um, so the spousal privilege is not a be-all, end-all. The day after Nelson and Davis got married, prosecutors charged Davis with burglary and tampering with evidence in connection to this case. If she pushes the spousal privilege, O'Connor says those charges could drastically change. Didn't she conspire? Didn't she go along with? Didn't she help cover it up? There's your answer. Charge her with murder. Whether Davis takes the stand or doesn't, the state still may have a difficult job proving who killed two teenagers and a baby boy. Janine Keesling, KCTV5 News. We reached out to Jackson County Prosecutor Gene Peters-Baker this evening, but it was too late to get a comment. We'll let you know when we hear.